A new day has begun in Yahweh's house in these last days. He's opened up our minds to see the truth. The undeniable name of Yahweh. There is no doubt that the true name of our Creator is Yahweh. In fact, the evidence is overwhelming. Unger's Bible Dictionary, Merrill F. Unger, 1957, Moody Press, Chicago, page 1177 says, Yahweh, the Hebrew tetragrammaton YHWH, traditionally pronounced Jehovah, is now known to be correctly vo vocalized Yahweh. New inscriptional evidence from the second and first millennia BC point toward this fact. The old view of Leclerc modernly propounded by Paul Hapt and developed by W.F. Albright has commended itself in the light of the phonetic development and the grammatical evidence of increased knowledge of Northwest Semitic and kindred languages. This thesis holds Yahweh to be originally a finite causative verb from the Northwest Semitic root HWY to be to come into being so that the divine name would mean he causes to be or exist that is he creates Amorite personal names after 2000 B.Y. lend support to the Hopped Albright view, demonstrating that the employment of the causative stem Yahweh he creates was in vogue in the linguistic background of the early Hebrew. The Wycliffe Bible Encyclopedia, 1975, Volume 1, page 690, the Moody Press, Chicago, tells us. The name par excellence for the Creator of Israel is Yahweh, found 6,823 times in the Old Testament. Through Israel's deliverance from bondage in Egypt, adoption as a nation, and guidance into the Promised Land, the Redeemer, Creator, is especially known by this name. Emphasis ours. The Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, 1962, Volume 4, page 923, Abingdon Press, Nashville, says, quote, Yahweh, the vocalization of the four consonants of the Israelite name for the Creator, which scholars believe to approximate the original pronunciation, End quote. James Moffat, in his translation, the Bible, a new translation, 1935, Harper and Brothers, informs us in his introduction, quote, Strictly speaking, this ought to be rendered Yahweh, which is familiar to modern readers in the erroneous form of Jehovah, where this version intended for students of the original would be, there would be no hesitation whatever in printing Yahweh, end quote. Although Moffat Suffet's substitutes the title, the Eternal, in the place of the name Yahweh, he fully admits a distinct loss of meaning in this. The Encyclopedia Judaica, 1972, Keter Publishing House, P.O.B. 7145, Jerusalem, Israel, Volume 7, page 680, states emphatically, quote, the true pronunciation of the name YHWH was never lost. Several early Greek writers of the Christian church testify that the name was pronounced Yahweh, end quote. The personal name of the Father of Israel was written in the Hebrew Scriptures with the four consonants, Y-H-W-H, and is referred to as the Tetragrammaton, at least until the destruction of the first temple in 586 B-Y. Yahweh's name was regularly pronounced with the Hebrew vowels, as is clear from the Lachish letters written shortly before that day. However, at least by the third century before Yahshua, our Messiah, was born, the pronunciation of the name Yahweh was avoided, and Adonai, the Lord, was substituted for it. The Century Bible by Adeni and Bennett, 1901, T.C. and E.C. Jacks, Edinburgh, Scotland, 
Volume 1, pages 90 and 91 tells us, Sometime after the return from the captivity and before the beginning of the Christian era, the Yadaim Jews came to believe that the holy name Yahweh was too sacred to be uttered on ordinary occasions. It was said to be pronounced by the high priest on the Day of Atonement at other times when anyone read and quoted aloud from what is called the Old Testament, the word Adonai, Lord, was usually substituted for Yahweh. And similarly, in the LXX Septuagint version, has Curios, the Vulgate Dominus, and the EV Lord, where the Hebrew was Yahweh. Hebrew was originally written without vowels, but when the vowel points were added, the vowel points of Adonai or Elohim were written with Yahweh as a direction that these words were to be read instead of the word whose consonants were Yahweh. Thus, we find the combinations Yehoah and Yehoah. At the Reformation, the former being the more usual was sometimes used as the name of the Mighty One of Israel, and owing to ignorance of its history was misread as Jehovah, a form which has established itself in English, but does not give the pronunciation of the holy name it represents. In the Middle Ages, when the consonantal text was supplied with the vowel points by the Masoretes, the Tetragrammaton was substituted in over 130 places in the Hebrew text with the Canaanite god El, Adonai. In some places, Elohim, God, gods, wherever anthropomorphism, ascribing the physical attributes of man to Yahweh, was applied, wherever they left the tetragrammaton intact, they placed diacritical marks beneath it to indicate pronunciation of the word to be spoken, Adonai, not the written Yahweh, which the Hebrews considered too sacred to be spoken aloud. For Yahweh, they substituted Baal, the Babylonian god El and Adonai, the Canaanite god El of the Phoenicians, both corresponding to the English word Lord, all caps. Likewise, the name of Yahweh's son, Yahshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation, has been substituted by Yeshua, Isus, Isus, Jesus, and Iesus, healing Zeus. Webster's 20th Century Dictionary Unabridged, page 2124, says that Zeus is the sky god and is also known as Dios, Latin, Dio Italian, Dios Spanish, Deus Sanskrit, and Zeus Soter, meaning Zeus the Savior. The substitution of the names of Yahweh and Yahshua by the names of pagan gods, Elohim, has brought immeasurable harm. Such names as Lord God, Jesus, and Christ in no way represent the meaning of the name revealed by Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, to Moshe and to the Hebrew, ancient Hebrews. By employing these names, the people unknowingly turn the worship of Yahweh into that of God's Elohim and actually ascribe the loving and merciful characteristics of the Father of Yahweh, of Israel, to the pagan gods, Elohim. Hosea 2, verse 8, quote, For she did not realize that it was I who gave her grain, wine, and oil, and multiplied her silver and gold, which they sacrificed to Baal, thinking it was the Lord that gave these blessings, quote, in their kingdom in a linear translation of the Greek scriptures, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Watchtower Bible, and Tract Society of New York Incorporated admit in their foreword, page 23, that while inclined to view the pronunciation Yahweh as the more correct way, we have retained the form Jehovah because of people's familiarity with it since the 14th century, quote, as an opposing example, the New International Version Interlinear Hebrew-English Old Testament edited by John R. Kohlenberger III, volume, four volumes, Zondervan Publishing House, Grand Rapids Missions, 49506, elects to use Yahweh's name wherever it is written in the Hebrew text. In volume 1, page 26 of the introduction is found this statement, quote, 
Yahweh, the personal name of the Creator, is always translated Yahweh, against the practice in the NIV of rendering it as Lord, all caps. On the one hand, this prevents confusion of the name with the title Adonai, my Lord, for the idea of Lord is not an integral element of the name. On the other hand, it may be the use of Yahweh in this work will encourage the reader to use the personal name of Yahweh in prayer and praise as, in, as in, is intended by the most common imperative in the scriptures. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Psalm 104, verse 35. Praise Yahweh. End quote. 